We're going today to refill our hay stores. We underestimated how much hay we needed last year because we underestimated how many animals we were going to be feeding. We did. When, why don't you come on and talk instead of yelling from the sideline like you keep doing in all these videos. Just heck, I got my number one heckler. Hair like Your this. hair looks great. I love big country curls. We could fit like 400 bales up there, but I think we got half of that. Yeah, we didn't. We only got 200 because we were we got we rid of all the, the goats. Cows. It was like, all right, we got two cows and two calves. People are gonna hate those roosters. Yeah, well. So we need a. We should let them out. No, and then out. They're too nice. Function. Okay. It's gonna be nice today, finally. Yeah. Nice day for camels to be out. So all of this to say, we don't have enough hay. Yeah. Really quiet in the barn now. Uh -huh. Look at my hair. My yeah. bangs are supposed to be down here, not up here. We, uh, <laughs> what'd you say? My bangs are supposed to be down here, not up here. <laughs> We were, uh, we were suggested by our camel mentor, when you get hay for your camels, to get a smorgasbord. Get a bunch of different hay from different people and let the camels kind of pick and choose what they like because they'll pick what's right for them. And that's something you can apply to pretty much all of your livestock. The cows will be particular about certain hay. Horses will be the same way. Goats, of course goats are picky about it. They have not loved our hay, I don't think. What do you think? She likes some of it. She eats some of it, but I don't know. I don't see them like chowing down like the cows do. I, I think that's because they're a they're a different animal. Yeah, With the cobwebs blowing in the wind, so beautiful. So today we're gonna do our chores. Then we gotta get loaded up and go get some hay. And we're getting some delivered and some we're picking up from Maybe different, different sources. Places. Big day. Hey. Get rolling. All right, Miss Mill. Smelly Mac. Ooh, that was this dumb place where to put that, wasn't it? All right, let's go in. Come on. Look up. Something. Or something. Yeah. Good property prices will come down. But, and of course, the money. What about that? That'll change too. In a property that we're not going to make money back from quickly. Right. Might be the wrong decision. We, we, I don't know. It's a conversation to have with your dad. Yeah. Last week we were doing a milking video and I talked about how Millie had some chapped teeth we were dealing with. And I had been using some cream that was like a petroleum based cream. And I was trying some teat cream that we got from Molly's Herbals. And I had been already using the petroleum based stuff for about a week solid to try to help with this chap teats. So I switched over to Molly's Herbals 
She's got a little, like mastitis cream, which this is not mastitis. This is just a chapped teat. And the likely cause of the chapped teat is actually from the fact that she used to be machine milked and now she's being hand milked. Well, I saw a huge change in the couple days we've been using Molly's herbals. I went from a couple chapped teats to just one right now. I got one stubborn chapped teat that is still, still got some issues. But out of three, two stopped completely. So that was a huge success. And now we're just still treating the one with Molly's herbal uh, lotion there. You might recognize the Molly's from the goat world. She runs the Fiasco Farm goat website, which is super popular and very good information for goat ownership. And she also on the other side does Molly's herbal. So she'll have deworming powders and things like that. So we've had that lotion since we got goats the first time, four or five years ago, probably six years ago. Season. Season season. I'm gonna stop at the bulk store today. Some gorgeous bulk. I can use eggs. This is the salve that we've been using, Molly's uh, Herbals Mastitis Utter Massage Salve. And uh, like I said, it's been really helping. Chap teats are probably a result of the fact, this is what our camel mentor said, a result of the fact that her, she was being machine milked and now she's being hand milked. A lot of people thought it might be the latex gloves. These are not latex gloves, they're nitrile gloves. One of the ways I'm getting exercise in the dogs right now, it's not hunting season, so they all have a tendency to gain some weight. We take them on the morning hay run. We drive the gator up on the hill and all the dogs go running alongside and behind the gator and they get a good run as we do a big lap around the property. So it's a good little morning routine. Farm chores are done, and now it's time to go get the hay. We're going to get a dump trailer hooked up to the car. We often get the comment, hey, time for you guys to buy a pickup truck. You know, not really big fan of going into debt for purchases, and I don't have the amount of money you need sitting aside to buy a pickup truck. Uh, that's not being held aside for something else. So, instead of going out and buying, you know, a 20, 30, $40,000 vehicle, uh, Sometimes renting a trailer, renting a dump trailer, a U-Haul, you can get a lot done. Uh, it's a little bit of an inconvenience. We're fortunate. We've been able to always have friends or family who are in landscaping, who have a dump trailer that we could borrow. And uh, we always try to reciprocate. Whenever we borrow stuff from friends or family, you know, you make sure you return it clean. Yeah, you, you know, give them some of that farm fresh bacon when you got it or sausage or whatever it is. You make it a mutually beneficial relationship. So today we're gonna load up the dump trailer and we're gonna drive down and pick up a whole bunch of hay. We got our hay today. At least one of them. We're supposed to get another delivery today. I'm not sure if it's coming yet or not. But I'm not even gonna put it up in the hayloft. Wind. That's better. I'm not even gonna put it up in the hayloft because 
This, we're gonna have at most 50 bales here, and the way I figure is we're gonna be throwing bales out clear into May. So, why put it upstairs only to throw it downstairs? That doesn't make sense. We're gonna stack hay inside the barn, really tight, really meticulous. Wherever I can find a little extra space, we're gonna put some hay bales today. And that way we have the hay that we need down for this year. Anything else we get will go upstairs. Got my new hay stacked, and in just a minute we're gonna test it out and see if the camels like the new hay. And apparently this second delivery is gonna show up any minute now, so that's coming too. But first it's time for the Homesteady Camel Train shout out! In case you're just joining us, we are doing a daily video for 100 days all about growing food for your family, for yourself, that helps your body feel good and operate better, makes you feel better as a person. Just food that's good for you, that makes your body better. That's what the Homesteady Camel Train is all about. We're doing 100 videos. Some of that is about our camels, who is gonna be sampling their hay in a minute. And other videos are about meat rabbits, and other videos are about milk cows, which we're gonna be milking the cows soon again. More on that in a minute or later. Uh, some of that's about growing sprouts or hydroponic food or food in your garden beds. And for 100 days, 100 videos, there are 100 spots to join the Homesteady Camel Train. You can join the train, you get a shout out on the show like Tia is about to, and you also get a one of a kind Homesteady Camel Train t-shirt, which we're about to see the very first one. I got pictures of the first one actually made, and that'll be on the channel soon, so that's exciting. And also, lifetime access to the Homesteady Pioneer program, which is bonus content, discounts on gear, and other stuff. Speaking of discounts, I'm getting a call from Dave from Northeast Edible. He's a discount vendor, and I gotta take this call. We're gonna hold up, we're gonna... Hey, Dave! Not much, man. How are you guys surviving with this uh, virus going around? <laughs> yeah. We have a have a heart. All right, ready to bring in the, uh, the camel lids. People always want to see them. I love it. Oh yeah, there's there's something else. No, I can't not. Hush. Shall we go milk? Let's go milk. Who said that? Uh, she said in her email, Tara. I can see you're already asking her. Is it gonna go on? No, just me. Are you sure? The farmer who just dropped off hay, cool guy. He said, uh, <laughs> I was talking about living in the country now, moving away from Connecticut. He says, yep, it's good to live far away from people. I've been practicing social distancing bef since before it was cool. <laughs> I got to get a haircut, but social distancing, I can't I can go. Cut it. I keep telling you, I'll cut it. Just want an excuse for why it's not cut. Get out of here, chickens. Get out of here. Afternoon milkings are usually harder than morning milkings. Um, I think it's because by the morning there's been more time passed and she's more eager to be milked. Afternoon milkings, for some reason, a lot of times we got to let Solomon back on and back on. Sometimes she lets down more than others. Afternoon milkings have always been less. You know, good morning milking, we can get a good quart and a half. Afternoon milking is like a quart. Well, that's a bummer. She just didn't let down. Our thought, uh, we noticed that the gate that separated the two of them, 
it was unhinged, unlatched, I guess is the right way to phrase it. Uh, and she was sticking her head through and eating hay. So there is a good chance that maybe somehow that gate got unlatched. Maybe they were playing with it. And uh, he might have reached his head through and nursed already today. I might come out and try again later because we don't like going in the evening. But this is camel milking. They can choose not to let down for you. And Okay, I gotta do a camel train shout out and then we're gonna let Millie choose, although I can tell she likes that hay bale. <laughs> we're gonna let her pick and choose which hay bales she likes best. But she definitely likes these newer ones. She is chowing down. So, camel train shout out for today. We got interrupted. Tia is today's camel train shout out. Tia McKee. Tia lives in Texas currently. She's renting right now, but someday she wants to have a hobby farm. Right now, she does have some animals. She has dogs and cats. Those are kind of like, you know, your starter animals. And she has chickens, which are your starter farmer animals, which means Tia, that hobby farm is coming. Her favorite chickens are Buff Orpingtons and Copper Morans. What do you think, bud? Chicken master? Hmm. Come here, chicken master. I think they're probably good if I knew what they were. <laughs> yeah, well, we have copper morans, or did we have blue morans? These were the ones that did the chocolate eggs. Those were chocolate brown. Which ones would you suggest you get next? If you're going for bunny. Oh, bunny. Oh, there's a bunny on the loose, Tia. Oh. Hold on, we gotta close that door. <laughs> there is a bunny loose in the barn right now. We don't know how it got out. We think it slipped out while we were opening and shutting the doors and now we have to catch this bunny. <laughs> that should be interesting. <laughs> okay, so my son is lying in wait for the bunny. So Tia currently doesn't have any of those chickens but she is gonna be getting some soon. And uh, think about what chickens you want Tia to get next. Chicken master, he's stalking a bunny right now. They are renting now, so they're trying to make sure anything they get is movable. Great thinking, Tia. Don't let renting stop you. Just keep movable infrastructure and movable animals. Great example, they are growing plants in pots right now. You can grow a lot of plants in pots. And uh, you can even grow like little trees, lemon trees, and blueberry bushes in pots. That's a fun thing to do. I've always wanted to do blueberry bushes in pots. You can get the soil super acidic in that little pot easier than you can soil outside. So try some blueberries, Tia. Tia says she cannot wait until the day that they have their own farm. It will come, Tia, so keep at it. She says, I fancy myself as an artist or maker in addition to future farmer. So you can check Tia out on Instagram. We'll have a link below to Tia's Instagram account. Tia's account is called Must Have Yarn. Tia, uh, ever do anything with camel yarn? Camel? Fiber, spinning. We're, we're trying to figure out how to, what to do with all the stuff we brush out of Solomon. So, so let me know what we're supposed to do with that. So go over, follow Must Have Yarn on Instagram. We'll have a link below. Thank her for today's episode because Tia sponsored this video in the Camel Train. And if you would like to sponsor a Camel Train video, just click there to join the Camel Train and you'll get your shout out as well as all the other stuff we already talked about. Now we gotta feed a camel and we gotta catch a bunny and we gotta separate cows because tomorrow we're gonna start milking cows again. For like the eighth time on this channel this year. We're milking, we're not milking, we're milking, we're not milking, so. More on that in a minute. Let's see if we can get this bunny. Keep going. Got it. Yes. You 
got it. Nice job. Looks like uh, all those years of fishing netting came in handy. And chicken. All right, let's bring Bunny back. And chicken. And chicken, of course. There's plenty of chickens you've been catching. Got it. We got the bunny. That was good. That was all my son's idea. Good job, son. I thought of snaking a two, one piece of wooden board up into the, where the crack the bunny was hiding, and then it spooked the bunny out and saw the bunny at once. Once, and then it was like just hiding where, <laughs> hiding the you last little spot. And I said, push it forward, and then I. Ding. It's funny, if a bunny had gotten out any other day this week, we could have just seen it running on the floor. Today we got this giant hay delivery and there's like little tunnels under the hay now. So it was like the perfect day for a bunny escape and he tried, but we got him. Now we're gonna give our camel, what, is, what are you calling this? Charcuterie board. A charcuterie board. We're gonna let her. Yeah. Hey, they're just cam they're just camels. <laughs> We're gonna give a charcuterie board to our camel. We're gonna let her pick, sample. We have three different kinds of hay in here. We're gonna let her sample them and see what she likes better. It kind of looks like a charcuterie Can't board, hay? doesn't it? Blue hay. So this is what we buy for our cows. This is very fine, like a third, third cutting. Really fine, uh, very nice and soft. But camels, they like more stocky, hard stuff like a second or even like a first cutting, really. So I'm guessing when we give Millie her selection, according to what I've learned, she should like stuff like this, which is a bit more stocky. Uh, this is more a, thick. I believe that's a first cutting, and this is, I think, maybe a second, and that's like a third. So we're gonna go wheel it over to her and see which one she goes I for. I think she's gonna wheel herself over to us. So this is tan, this is blue, and this is the stuff we've had. So let's see, let's go bring it to Miss Millie. Dusty in here. It is dusty. My sisters are good, not good triers. The picky eaters. Looks Think like Millie's gonna be picky. Maybe. <laughs> Let me grab this. Hopefully, you don't show it to my sis. This video to my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, okay, that's the one she's used to. That's the one we've been feeding her. Let's see. She's eating her way Ooh, she's feeling it. She's saying, hmm, this one's different. Oh, that's the one I think she's gonna like. Which one do you think she's gonna like? I think, I hope she will like the blue one, but Which maybe the same one you. The blue's in the middle, old's in front, and tan. Okay, that's the one she's used to. She's eating the one she's used to. She's feeling it. Just as bad as my sister's. <laughs> <laughs> It wants to watch cooking shows when you get to watch a camel pick hay instead. The new Food Network show? <laughs> Camels try instead of <laughs> try. <laughs> the, she's just as bad as me. Oh, Millie doesn't like that idea. Okay. She doesn't want to be on Food Network. She wants to be on YouTube. She likes to have her own. Maybe she doesn't like any of them. The hay going home is. All of you. <laughs> Do you want to be a judge on Camel's Try? <laughs> would you be the nice judge or would you be like the hard judge? Hmm. You'd be the hard judge. I would be the dessert judge. You'd be the dessert. <laughs> Alright, we got to go separate some cows. So we're going to go, we're going to leave Millie to eat, have some peace and quiet. She can decide what she likes. Let's go separate some cows. Put the GoPro in there. So we have not been milking the cows because of a couple reasons really. We've been working with a dietitian to help us with the issues that we're facing with our baby and with Kay's diet. And the dietitian said that there's a chance if the baby has milk allergies, the whole family does. So she really suggested that we all go on an elimination diet from milk 
and from gluten. So for the last like two months, our kids have had no milk and no gluten. And the key to finding out whether or not, according to our dietitian, and not just ours, but a lot of dietitians, and, and I wanted to know, a dietitian and a, a nutritionist are two different things. A dietitian, uh, I'm gonna just say, takes a lot more requirements to be called a dietitian than a nutritionist. I don't wanna diss anybody. I've learned a lot in this last year about food and, and feeding ourselves and what you think is okay. And, and I'm not saying anything negative about natural stuff, nutritionists, dietitians, all this stuff. I'm not judging it. I'm trying all kinds of stuff. But I just do want to know a dietitian, to be a dietitian is a lot more work than to be a nutritionist. So we're working with a dietitian and she has suggested that we try no dairy, no gluten for our family and then bring it back and see what happens. The way a total elimination diet works is you remove the thing from your system long enough for your system to stop reacting to it and then you slowly reintroduce things and you just see what happens. And in my opinion, what better way is there to tell whether or not you're allergic to something than to remove it, feel good, and then bring it back in and see how you feel in a very slow and controlled manner. In my opinion, that's the only way to really figure out if you're allergic to something or you have an intolerance to something, not including things that your body actually develops antibodies to and cause an anaphylactic reaction. You can actually do blood tests for those sort of things. But as far as food intolerances go, you can take tests and, and it may show up in your blood, but that's not necessarily, according to our dietitian, uh, not necessarily mean that your body is actually not able to handle that or it's intolerant tolerant to that food. So according to our dietitian, and I trust her, otherwise I wouldn't use her, the best way to find out if you're intolerant to some food is a total elimination diet and then bringing it back in. Again, we're talking about things that don't cause anaphylaxis, but things that cause like tummy upset. So we want to know, do our kids get tummy upset from regular mini jersey milk. It would be so sad if we couldn't have our A2A2 A2 mini jersey milk anymore. I really don't think I have an issue with it. so. You know, there's one person that can have it. But what we want to do is now that it's been out of our diet for a while, we want to bring it back and start having it again and seeing what happens. The other, so so the reason we're bringing it back is for that. that the real reason we had it out of our diet for so long was because we did want to test whether or not there was an issue. Now there was another reason we brought it out of our diet for a long time, and that was because of cross-contamination. The baby is very sensitive to milk, regular cow milk. Kendra was cooking one night and she used butter and it was on her fingers. And later that night he had a horrible night and he was screaming and he was upset. So while we are going to want to test and see if our other kids can have it, we also have to be really careful and anybody who has allergy issues or, or uh, intolerance issues knows cross-contamination is an issue. So for a long time, we've just steered clear and said no chance of cross-contamination. A lot of people have been like, well, why aren't the other kids drinking milk? Well, we didn't want to have cross-contamination. We still don't. We still have to be really careful. Um, so right now, our, we're going to start milking again, but we may just milk, freeze the milk, and put it up for a rainy day. You see, we don't really have a choice right now. We're going to have to milk Luna because, let me tell you why. Here it goes. We mentioned in a video previously, we have sold Grasshopper. Our first calf that we sold from the Homesteady herd. It was a big decision. It was not an easy one, but to help us, to help us cover the cost of the camels, uh, we needed to raise a little bit more money to help kind of get this up and running. And one of the ways we decided to do that was to sell livestock our mini jerseys. Come on, cows! Here they come. So Grasshopper is going to a new homestead. Not this month, next month, uh, more or less. In a little while, she'll be going to a new homestead. So she needs to be weaned, but Luna's still in milk. So we're gonna gradually wean Grasshopper, and at the same time, we're gonna be milking Luna because you can't just wean grasshopper and let Luna, we don't want to just dry Luna off hard like that. We want it to be soft and gradual. So we have to milk right now. There's, there's not really an option. 
Come on, girls. Let's go, cows. Come on, cow cows. Come on, girls. What good girls. With Grasshopper sold and uh, needing to wean her, having to milk out Luna, we're going to have this milk, which right now with the way food is at the supermarket, the dairy section and the meat section with this coronavirus, uh, the dairy section and the meat section is empty. So having the milk at least frozen in our freezer is not going to be a bad thing right now. Even if it's not for our family because we're worried about cross-contamination with the baby, even if it's for our friends and family or uh, you know, our local area, whatever, having the milk in the freezer won't be a bad thing right now. There's a lot of uncertainty with this virus. There's a lot of panic. A lot of people are going into the supermarket and just clearing shelves of stuff because they want to make sure their family has what they need. And you know what? No sense in having milk go to waste, even if we just put it in the freezer. We do have to be careful about cross-contamination, uh, so we will be. It is, but milk won't be a bad thing to have. Here, girls. Let's see if I can lead Luna and Lady out and leave the calves in. Come on, cows. Come on, Ladybug. <laughs> Luna will go anywhere for a scoop of feed. All right, let Luna and Lady out. Come on, Loon. There you go. Okay. Come on, Lady. There you go. Go for it. Yeah, but no. Up, up. Up, up. Come on, bug. Take a step. Up, so we spin. Oh, come on, up, up. There we go. Good girls. Good girls. Yeah. All right, come on with me, girls. All right. Let's spook the ball. So far, I think Millie is eating the hay she's used to. She keeps going for the hay that we had. But camels, they're sensitive animals. Maybe she just needs some time to warm up to the other stuff. I hope, because we're running low on the hay that she likes. We have about, well, we have about the same amount of bales as all this stuff. Um, but yeah, she really seems to like the stuff we've been feeding her. Maybe just because it's what she's used to. We're going to attempt to milk Millie one more time. We're going to go in there and see if she will let down for us. And then it's been a long day. It's time to, to call it. So let's go see if we get some milk. Oh. Alright, wait for me to have her all ready. Success! That was great. All she needed was another hour. We did some stuff and here we go. Beautiful, delicious camel milk. Kay will be thrilled. It is a big letdown if you don't get the daily milk. So. You've only ever seen this on Homesteady. A cat. And what does this cat do? Lay eggs. <laughs> Get out of there, kitty cat. Wow, look at how many eggs this cat lays. Go ahead and grab them. Needed the egg breath. Our video will go, that video will go viral. <laughs> So we have all this rare special livestock on the Homesteady Farm. We have camels for camel milk, and now we have cats for cat eggs. Who wants to order their very first? Come on, kitty. 
Who wants to order their first egg laying cat? You let me know in the comments below and we'll put you on the waiting list. <laughs> Let's shut this one down, buddy. Bye.